Good afternoon. I'm David Wendell with Bushcraft on Fire. And it's good to have you with us for another video. Uh, I wanted to talk today, I've had a few requests about the sling that's in my backpack and how to use that sling and a little bit of history with the sling. Now, a sling has been used for a weapon for many, many thousands of years. The first recorded information that we have that I know of was David in the scripture using a sling not only to kill animals, uh, wolves that would attack his pack and lions, but also uh, to kill Goliath. And this is very similar to the sling that David may have used. His was probably made out of leather and not 550 paracord, but it was similar in shape and design. Now, the sling that I've made, I made this about a half a year ago, and it's simply made out of paracord that I have folded together. It's a single piece of paracord. It's got a pretty nice pocket in it that will hold medium-sized rocks. Again, I use this simply for uh, simply for recreation. I don't hunt with it. It's just a, a toy, if you would, to go out and practice with and increase my accuracy. Now, while I'm here, let me say this. I am in no way an expert on slinging. I'm proficient. I can hit a target maybe six times out of ten, but I am not the greatest. Perhaps there are other of you out there that know a lot more about the sling and could add comments to the video. And I'd appreciate that, and so would the viewers of the video. So if you have any comments and you're an expert or know a lot about a sling, please feel free to add those comments. Now one of the questions that I was asked was how long should the arms of your sling be? Uh, mine are about two foot long. When I made this, I cut it down. I could cut it down to one foot and that would work fine. Slings generally in history ranged anywhere from one foot long up to maybe 15 foot long. And what they would do, they would get on a ladder and, and on top of a pole or something and they would hold the sling down and they would have what's called a loader. And they would load balls, maybe a pound, pound and a half balls into that sling. And they would use scatter shot. They'd use 10 or 15 of these in a very big sling pouch and then they would actually have that loader help them begin to swing that around and because of the length of that sling in a war they could actually sling that many 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 yards maybe hundreds of yards it was a long distance weapon at that point more like a shotgun than a single shot that we use typically today so you can use BBs in this I just tend to pick up small rocks we live in Missouri and we're filled with rocks around here so I'll show you those rocks in just a few minutes. But what is the best size sling for you? I highly recommend that you start out with a small sling, maybe about a foot long. The smaller your sling is, the more accurate you're going to be. Uh, think of a sling as an extension of your arm. And so when you're throwing your sling, you're simply extending your arm reach, much like throwing a baseball or throwing a rock at a target. However, the sling will give you extra power, and you'll probably be able, as we, uh, as we demonstrate this, to hear the sling in the background before the, the rock actually hits the target. So what we're going to do is to uh, show you how to use this. Now, again, start out with something small, maybe a foot long. As you increase your skill, and as you get better, you can lengthen it up to a foot and a half, two foot. Some people use three foot. I can't use a three-foot sling. I just don't have any accuracy with it. I tend to stick around a two-foot sling. So use what's comfortable for you and, and, and practice with it. We know that practice will certainly increase your skill level and that'll help you out to figure out what is the right length on the sling that you use. So now let me go over. I'm going to stand about 20, 25 foot away from the target that I've set up and I'm going to show you how there are two ways to use the sling because there are two basic uh, methods of using a sling and then there's a couple combinations but we'll just do the two basics today to show you and give you an idea of how to use the sling. So join me over at the target range. Now the first thing I've done is on the end of this sling on one string I've put a slip knot. That slip knot just fits right over my middle finger and it'll sit there and hold the sling on so when I let go of the other end it doesn't uh, doesn't go away. The other end just simply has a knot and I put that knot over my finger and then back down. Now I will load a rock into this pouch and you can see when I load that 
that the pouch holds the rock evenly. It's not up this way, it's not down this way, but it's even so that the rock can uh, sit in there well balanced and not fall out. Now there are two basic methods as I said of using the sling. The first is what's called an overhand method, much like slinging a baseball. You would simply come around and release your sling toward your target. That's the overhand method. The other is what's called the overhead or horizontal method. That's where you would sling the sling around and then release to your target. Now I generally use the overhead. There is advantages to both methods. If you use the baseball type sling, you're going to be right in line with your target and you just have to base up or down on the elevation of your target. If you use the overhead sling, you're going to basically be on the right elevation and you just have to have the right release in order to go toward your target. So let's try this out and see how it works. This is the overhead and I sling at my target. I missed the target by about two inches to the left hand side there. So let me try again. And I missed it by about three inches that time. So I'm off a little bit to the left. Let me get another rock and uh, we'll try the overhand so you can see that. In All right, I've got another couple rocks. Let's try the overhand method to show you. Basically what I'm going to do is just swing this a few times and then when it gets up parallel with my body, I'm going to snap it over and I hit the target that time. That was good. Maybe I need to go to that slinging method. We'll do it again. Just sling it a couple times to get the rhythm. And I just about killed a duck that time. Alright, let me set up the target again. It fell over in the wind. And let's take a couple shots of the target and see how we can do it. <laughs> I'm David Wendell with Bushcraft on Fire. I'm glad to have you with us on this video about slings and hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, again, I'm not an expert. Maybe some of you out there know better, know some different things. But I wanted to put this up for those questions that had been asked about sling length and different types of throwing. So enjoy the day. Have a great one. Get out in the bush and have fun. And we'll see you again real soon on another video.